There are loads of different rules that we can use when we're doing natural deduction. Which rules do we actually need? One way of answering the question is by showing that we can derive some rules from other rules. Let's see how we do that. Hello everyone, welcome to Attic Philosophy. This is a series of videos introducing the basic concepts of logic. In the previous few videos, we've been looking at natural deduction, what it is, what the rules are, and how to apply the rules. In this video, we're gonna look at how you can derive new rules from old rules. So these are the rules that we introduced, but when I introduced them, I said, well, there are actually some options there, particularly our rules for negation and for the falsum. We can use these rules, but we could have used some slightly different rules. So we are gonna look at some alternative rules now, and we're gonna see that we can derive these rules from this set that we've got here. So what does it mean to say that we can derive a new rule from our existing ones? It's probably easiest to see with an example. So let's look at this rule, modus tollens. You might have come across this already in, in philosophy. It says from a premise, if A then B, and a second premise, not B, you can infer not A. So it's kind of like a companion to modus ponens. Modus ponens says, if A then B, A therefore B. This one goes, if A then B, not B, therefore not A. Okay, so if that's true, but B is false, a had better be false as well. That's kind of what's going on. Now, we haven't included modus tollens as one of our basic set of rules. We, we've got modus ponens instead, but I'm saying that we can derive this rule from the rules we've already got. Okay, so what does that mean? Well, it means if we start off a proof with these premises, then we can derive the conclusion of the rule, not using this rule, but just using the rules that we've already got. Okay, so ignoring modus tollens, we can start with this and we can infer this just using our previous rules. So that's like saying we can't prove anything using modus tollens that we couldn't already prove in our system. We could, if we wanted to, add modus tollens to our existing set of rules and we wouldn't gain anything. It would be a conservative addition to our set of rules. Okay, just to be clear about that, if we did add modus tollens as a rule, it might allow some proofs to be a little bit shorter than they otherwise would be just using our primitive rules, but it wouldn't be a difference in what we could prove. There's nothing such that we can't prove it with our original rules that we can prove with modus tollens. If you can prove it using modus tollens, we can prove it with our existing rules. So now let's see how we go about deriving modus tollens using our existing rules. We're gonna start off assuming the premises are modus tollens, if A then B and not B. Now we have to use our existing rules and we're gonna to try to prove not A. Since that's a negation, the best bet is to use reductio ad absurdum, so we're gonna assume A and try and infer a contradiction. Well, that's simple, we assume A, that allows us to derive B using arrow elimination, that gives us a contradiction so we can infer the falsum and then we get not A. Okay, here's the premises of modus tollens, here's the conclusion of modus tollens. We inferred modus tollens just using our existing rules. Specifically, we use reductio ad absurdum and we used modus ponens. Okay, here's another example, disjunctive syllogism. This is the one that goes from a disjunction and one of the disjuncts being false to concluding, well, it must be the other disjunct that's true, okay? A or B, not A, therefore B. It's worth noting that in classical logic, this is actually equivalent to modus ponens. Let's see how we would derive that from our existing rules. So we're gonna start off with the two premises. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna reason by cases using or elimination. So we're gonna assume A. That allows us to infer the falsum because we've got a contradiction here. And from the falsum, we can infer anything we like. Let's infer B. Then we do the second bit of reasoning by cases. We assume B. Since we've assumed B, we can have B here by repetition. Okay, so we reason by cases. We inferred B in each case and that gives us B overall. So from these, we infer B. But we didn't use disjunctive syllogism to infer that, we just use our existing rules. Namely, we use the introduction rule for false and we used our explosion rule. This rule I called repetition and or elimination. So I used this rule called repetition, but that isn't actually one that we've seen yet. So 
we'd better show that we can derive it. Here's the rule. It basically allows us to repeat something within a proof. It's pretty simple to derive. So why don't you pause the video at this point, see if you can do it, come back when you're done and see if your answer is the same as mine. OK, so here's how I did it. We start off assuming A. I want to end up with A here, but I can't use repetition because that's what we're trying to derive. I have to use some other rule. Well, here's a rule I can use. I've got A as a premise, so I can infer A and A. That's an OK use of the AND introduction rule. And having used that introduction rule, I can then eliminate AND to get A, like this. So from A to A via a use of conjunction, introduction, and then elimination. Repetition can be a pretty useful rule to use. For instance, in the previous example where we assumed B and then used repetition to infer B again, if we didn't do that, we wouldn't have anything to write here, or we wouldn't have the right form of inference so that we could then conclude B using reasoning by cases. So repetition was kind of useful there. It meant we could avoid the detour through conjunction, introduction, and then elimination. Here's another really useful rule that we can derive, double negation elimination. We can go from not not A to A. This is a hallmark of classical logic. How do we go about deriving it? This one's a really simple proof, so I'm going to hand it over to you. Pause the video, come back when you're done, and let's see if we agree. So here's how we can derive double negation elimination. We start off with a double negation, not not A. We're trying to get to A. We don't know what the main connective of A is, so it's a good idea to use indirect proof because that allows us to infer any old sentence. To do that, we have to assume not A and try to get a contradiction. OK, well, there's a contradiction between not not A and not A. So we can infer the Folsom constant using Folsom introduction. And then indirect proof tells us since we assumed not A and got a contradiction, we can infer A. So we've reasoned from not not A to A. That's double negation elimination. We've been looking at ways in which we can derive new rules from our existing set of rules. But we can also derive some of our existing rules from the other rules. So in other words, we can show that some of the rules that we initially began with are redundant. We didn't need to include them in the first place because we could always derive them from the others. Let me give you some examples. This is the explosion rule. It says from a contradiction from Folsom, we can infer any sentence we like. We included this in our initial set of rules just so that we had two for each connective, including two for Folsom, but we didn't need to include this one because we can derive it from other rules. Let's see how. So let's start off assuming Folsom. We're going to want to infer A. We don't know what the connective is there, so we're going to use indirect proof. OK, to do that, we're going to assume not A. We're going to try and get a contradiction. Well, we've already got one there, so we can add it here using repetition. We assume not A. We got Folsom, and that allows us to infer A. So that's how we can derive explosion from our existing rules, that is, from repetition and indirect proof. Repetition wasn't actually one of our original rules, but we just showed that we can derive it from conjunction, introduction and elimination. So from our original rules, the two conjunction rules plus indirect proof allow us to derive the explosion rule. Here's another example, reductio ad absurdum, the introduction rule for negation. This one, it turns out, is also redundant. We didn't need to include this in our basic rules. We can infer it from the other ones. This one is a little bit more tricky, but I'm going to give you a go. Hit pause, come back when you've got your answer and see if it agrees with mine. So what we need to do to derive reductio is assume that we can infer Folsom from A and come up with a proof that using that gets us to not A. Here's how it goes. We start off with the initial proof here from A to Folsom. We can encode that bit of the proof by using arrow introduction, OK, by saying that if A, then Folsom. And from that, we want to infer not A. Now, we would normally do that using reductio, the introduction rule for negation. However, that's what we're trying to prove. So we can't use reductio here. But a different way to get to not A 
is to use indirect proof from not not a. Okay, so if we assume not not a and get a contradiction, indirect proof gets us to not a. Let's see how that goes. Let's assume not not a. Using double negation elimination gets us a on its own. From a on its own, we can apply modus ponens to here. That gets us the falsum. We assume not not a, we've got falsum. Using indirect proof, we get not a. So from this assumption here, we can get to not a. And that's what reductio tells us. So in lots of the derivations we've just done, we've used indirect proof. So indirect proof seems to be really central to the proof system that we're using. But actually, it too is redundant in the sense that we can get it, we can derive it from some of the other rules. Deriving indirect proof is a lot simpler than deriving reductio. So I'm going to give you a go at this one. Hit pause. Come back when you've got your answer. Here's how this proof is going to go. So again, we're going to assume that we can reason from not A to falsum. And we're going to try to derive A. We're not allowed to use indirect proof, but we are allowed to use any of the other rules. We can use reductio directly on this. Reductio tells us if we assume not A and get falsum, we infer not not A. And then using double negation elimination, we get A. So from this part of the proof, we have got to A, and that is just indirect proof. So we've looked at lots of different examples there. Let's try and sum it up. If we have indirect proof in our system, we can do without explosion and without reductio. Indirect proof does all the work of those two. On the other hand, if we have reductio in our system and we add double negation elimination, then we can do without indirect proof and we can still do without explosion. And it's worth noting that in a system like this, for classical propositional logic, if we also take out double negation elimination, we get a natural deduction system for intuitionistic logic. We'll look at that in a future video. OK, that is everything for today. Thank you so much for watching. This is the end of this series of videos on natural deduction for propositional logic. But stick around because I'm going to be adding videos on natural deduction for intuitionistic logic, for first order logic, for modal logic and for many valued logic. If you want to get updates on them, why not subscribe to the channel? Hit the bell icon for updates. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you back soon.